Dogs come in severely matted to the grooming salons on a daily basis, and why is this the case? This is Harley the Golden Doodle, and there is not one single mat on her, and that's because her owner uses a long pin brush and comb. Unless you have a short-haired dog like a pit bull, these aren't tools that might be a need, these are a need. And the third most important thing is having a brushing spray. When I talk to dog parents, they say yes they have a brush, yes they have a comb, but they almost never have a brushing spray. You want to get one that is a conditioning detangling spray and you want to spray it all over their body before you start brushing. I am also grooming Harley, but I'm doing her prep work first so then I can get the best haircut. So amazing, you have a long pin brush and a long pin comb, a brushing spray, and now you just need to know how to properly brush. When I have people that say they brush their dog every single day and then their dog still comes in matted, typically it's because they are only brushing the top layer of the hair and they're not even reaching the root of the hair. To put it in perspective, if you're only brushing your dead ends and you're not reaching the thickest part of your hair, then your hair is going to get tangled. So there is this super easy way of brushing to ensure that you are not missing any part of the dog's hair. The technique is called line brushing and I already did it on this leg that I'm brushing right now. I am going to show you how to do it in a second, but you see how my brush and comb were easily going through Harley's hair? That's because there's no matting and my brush and comb are actually long enough to actually hit the root of the hair. So if you have one of those super dingy $5 short pin brushes, it's really not going to help you. To start line brushing, you want to focus on one portion of the dog and in this instance I'm doing Harley's left leg. I do have a stand dryer that's parting the hair for me, but you see how I'm slowly using my brush and going up in a line? It's like mowing the lawn. You go over the part that you just did again, so then you make sure you're not missing anything. What we do is we push all the hair up with our brush or comb. Honestly, you could even do it with your hands. And then we use our brush and comb to slowly go up the dog's leg and body. Opposed to if you're only brushing the hair down like I'm doing right now, you actually aren't getting all the hair that you need to. You want to repeat this until you get the whole dog's body brushed out. I do all the legs first, then the body, then the tail, then the face. It doesn't really matter what order you go in as long as you're able to tell what's brushed and what isn't. I'm really weird and I like to brush out what needs to be brushed out the most first and then work on the other parts later. So it would make more sense if you start in one area, stay connected to that area, and then slowly inch up until you finish the whole dog. The most common places where dogs are matted I would say are the ears, tail, and wherever the dog's collar or harness goes. You do have to be careful where you're brushing when you're doing ears because you don't want to scratch their sensitive little ears. So for the insides of the ears, just make sure that your brush isn't hitting their skin and you're only brushing their hair. I would pretty confidently say that dogs that actually have tails and hairy tails, 99% um, of them are somewhat matted, have at least one or two tangles in them. They are literally almost never perfectly brushed out. Some of you might be asking, Logan, why do I also need a thick pinned comb if I already have a long pin brush? And the answer to that is because if there is a mat or a tangle or something small stuck in the hair, the brush is just going to glide right over it most of the time because its pins aren't strong enough to actually get through the mat. So that's why you use your comb to get those chunky mats out. Part of doing Harley's prep work is the paw pads, nails, and sanitary areas. When I do paw pads, I do a 40. Some groomers don't like to scoop like how I'm doing here in the paw pads and they will just like hover over the paw pad. And personally, I just believe it depends on the dog and what they're comfortable with. Harley hardly moves a muscle, and so it's really easy for me to get in there and get all the hair that needs to get out. Harley always seems to get like twigs and dirt in her feet because she has some pretty deep paw pads. So her mom actually prefers that I do go shorter in that area. Because some of y'all look at your dogs right now, and if they have hairy paw pads, just know there is so much dirt and gunk that is there because they walk on their feet and it just goes right in that hair. Sometimes if you have hard floor or tile, dogs will like slip if their paw pads are too hairy, so please get them done if they are overgrown. I did a nine blade on Harley sanitary this time. Last time I didn't do her sanitary because she had some irritation there. Um, I'm not sure what the issue was, but it's all good now. And then on my clipper for her body, I do a one guard comb and I blend it into her legs. Harley comes on a three to four week grooming schedule. I don't give her a full haircut every time, but she does get like a bath and a tidy up at least. 
I know some of you are probably thinking like, wow, every three to four weeks, that's so soon. However, dog skin is actually on a 21 day cycle and after 21 days, the dead skin and hair can build up and cause skin infections. Rooting back to what I was saying earlier about matting, if you bring your dog on a three to four week schedule, then you might notice that when that time comes to finally get them groomed again, they aren't tangled and your groomer isn't calling you saying that you have to shave them bald. This doesn't mean that you don't have to brush your dog every two to three times a week because you still do, but maybe you can actually leave your dog fluffier and cuddlier, I guess, and you won't have to fight with your dog last minute when it's going to the groomers to see if it's matted. You know how many people tell me that their dogs won't let them brush it at home and they'll always bite or run away or be scared? There might be a few reasons why this is and here are some solutions that might help. So the first reason is that your dog could already be matted and so when you're brushing it you're actually just brushing and pulling at their hair that's matted and that does hurt them. However, if that's not the reason and your dog like will literally run away at the sight of a brush. I recommend tackling this by when you're ready to pick up that brush, spoil the living fart out of that dog for that day, let it run around and get all of its energy out, and then when he's sleeping in your bed, grab that brush and comb and brushing spray and start brushing away. Make sure you have a high reward treat and maybe another person if your dog is more on the feisty end. You want this experience to be the most positive you can possibly make it, and I say this all the time, but progress is not a straight line up. If your dog doesn't like the brush, try doing what I said once a day, if not twice a day, and keep doing that until your dog is more comfortable with it. There are totally going to be days where you think your hard work is not working, and your dog can totally pick up on that and take advantage. Be persistent because if you have a dog with long hair, you can't not brush it. You have to brush it throughout its entire life. And I forgot to mention earlier, but using that brushing spray can make sure that your brush and comb go through your dog's coat easier and hopefully more tolerable. Much like with people, it takes a few weeks for things to become a habit. So if you aren't keeping up with it, then it's just not going to work. Harley is always such an amazing girl, and I think that she was a great example of a doodle that's trained, well-behaved, and well taken care of. Which, no hate to doodle owners, it's just kind of hard to find. Doodles have a coat type that is so hard to maintain, especially if it's like super curly. I did some final finishing touches with my thinners from New Moon. All of the scissors that I use on all my dogs are all from New Moon. They're great. I love everything about them. So there's a link in my bio if you want to check them out, as well as a discount code. But I gave Harley that Christmas necklace because it's almost Christmas, y'all. I hope you guys are excited, even though I'm not excited for the snow. My favorite seasons are probably ranked fall, summer, spring, and then last and very much least winter. But I'm all done with Harley. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you're new, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really does do a lot. Bye, Harley.